All right, you ready to go, David? I'm David. sorry. Are you ready to go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. All right. Welcome, everybody. My name is Woody LeBounty. And I'm David Gallagher. I just want to thank you all. We're going to talk about Roadhouse San Francisco tonight. And this is, you know, sometimes we do these uh, history presentations and we have like a point, some, you know, big important thing we want to get across. This is more a fun tour of places where people used to drive and drink uh, <laughs> in the olden days of San Francisco. And there was definitely a seamy side to it and, and a negative side to this, but we're going to kind of just have some fun tonight and look at some of the... Uh, old roadhouse dives and some of the more uh, elaborate resorts that San Francisco used to have, mostly in the 1800s, but also the early 1900s. So David, this picture, I just want, I think you know this, David, this picture has got to be one of my favorite San Francisco history pictures of all time. And uh, we got it from our friend Glenn Cock, who I think got it on eBay. Um, so we'll talk about this building later, but um, it's just an amazing picture. Epic, epic picture of a remarkable place and a remarkable event. Yeah, just the motorcycle club down there. It's just a great photo. So, all right, let's get started. Uh, most of you, I think, know this is part of the new project I'm doing called San Francisco Story. And it's basically an email I send out once a week on Wednesdays, something about San Francisco history. Um, but it's kind of a fun project of mine. So if you haven't signed up for it, go to SanFranciscoStory.com hit the subscribe, it's free to subscribe. And if you become a friend of Woody, you get little perks like you could have attended this half price. Plus in about two weeks, my annual journal is coming out. This is a printed journal um, of longer pieces I've written and uh, just kind of fun stuff I like and this beautiful cover by Paul Madonna. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Paul Madonna is a local artist. He recently got in a horrible car accident um, just like two days after he gave me this cover art, actually. Um, so there's a GoFundMe. If you go to our my social media, you can find a link to it if you want to help Paul. He's got a long road to recovery back, but he's supposed to make a full recovery. So that's good. Terrible, terrible story. Yeah. Um, other things we do at San Francisco Story is I'm trying to do little walks and tours every couple of months. This is us. We had a nice walk at the Lone Mountain Cemeteries. Uh, in the Richmond district uh, last month, I guess. Right, David, that was fun. Yeah, oh, it's great. It was a great walk, a uh, nice group. A lot of uh, familiar faces in that bunch, but some unfamiliar ones too. Yeah. We learned a lot. All right, let's start the roadhouse. So first of all, David, what is a roadhouse? What is our, we got some time machine rules and regulations tonight. And the first thing is what the heck is a roadhouse? How are we going to define it? I think it's, you know, it, a, a roadhouse. Um, well, obviously, it's a place on the road somewhere. It's typically not. I mean, the places we're talking about are typically not the destination, though it can be. Mm -hmm. um, it's a place for recreation, you know, to go out, have a have a drink or have something to eat. Um, uh, maybe spend the night, possibly, maybe not maybe um, do some things that you don't do when you're under the scrutiny of, of all your neighbors prying eyes. <laughs> right. I guess like a, a very simple uh, definition would be like a bar slash restaurant, um, usually on like a country road. So we have these today. I mean, if you go to like, if you stop at the Pelican Inn in Marin County, for example, you're driving, right. you stop for lunch or, um, the Mountain House is that still open over in Woodside, down on the ridge in the peninsula? Uh, I'm I'm not sure. I know there's one out in uh, Portola Valley, the old Alpine Inn. Which yeah, was, is that the one we're talking about? Yeah, I guess that's one too. It's, but it's like, sort of um, like you have a road, you're on a drive, and you stop for a, a meal or a drink. And in the old days, you often could stop for other recreational opportunities, which we'll talk about. So that's it's not a city bar; it's more a a, a bar slash restaurant on a road in a more isolated place. Yeah, and we used to have these right here in San Francisco. Right, and sort that's of. what I think is gonna be eye-opening, right? So, because we don't have country roads anymore, really. And the other sort of rule, or I guess the, the time boundary we're talking about here is the roadhouses in San Francisco start in the 1850s, right in the beginning 
of San Francisco. This is actually the uh, Long Branch or Seal Rock House at Ocean Beach, which started in the 1850s. And they went all the way into, I think we're gonna cut it off early 30s. Um, they, roadhouses changed and they adapted, but there were still open spaces and this sort of take a ride to go and hit a few places um, mentality into the early 30s. So this is Topsy's Roost, right next to where we just saw the Long Branch at Ocean Beach. Um, definitely a roadhouse feel. So we'll get more into it as we go through uh, our trip tonight. All right, let's go back to the early, early days, David. And uh, I just, in San Francisco story, I put out a couple of emails talking about this, so I won't get too deep into it. But the first roadhouses in San Francisco date back to when San Francisco was just this little village around where downtown and Portsmouth Square is today. So in this view, this map, uh, the west is at the top and the north is at the right. And this is Market Street. Um, and then just south of that is Mission Street, which went out to Mission Dolores. And you can see in 1858, this, it was the countryside. It was marshy and open land and agricultural. So it definitely qualified for what we're looking for in a roadhouse. It's out in the country and you're trying to get out of town and have some fun. So what do we have out there? This is another thing you'll find out about roadhouses. They often had attractions that kind of did double duty for the roadhouse. These are two horse racing tracks that were in the Mission District in the 1850s, um, just south of Mission, I mean, just east of Mission Street. And people would go out on the Mission Road, go to these race tracks, go to roadhouses that were along the road, and they would take the little spur up to Mission Dolores, which is the church today, David, but you don't yeah. think it was a roadhouse, right? <laughs> no. I mean, it was, and it was a church back then too, wasn't it? I mean, sure. Yeah. Been... So this is a view though. I just want to show you because this was the wild west of the time. So this is a view we're looking west on 16th street going right down the middle here. And uh, over here was a place at 16th and Mission called the Nightingale, which was a very well-known roadhouse. It was also sort of the center of the mission community at the time. People would vote there. There were public meetings and balls and any kind of event happened at the Nightingale at 16th and Mission. And just up to where Mission Dolores was, right next to it was a place called the Mansion House. Can, you, can we talk this, one right? sec about, the, about Mission Creek crossing right there on that ah. bridge? Yeah, you can actually see a little boat there. <laughs> this is the creek going through, um, all filled in now pretty much today. And so that uh, bridge was kind of 16th and Harrison, and we're standing kind of where the where where the SPCA is. Right. Yeah, that's a good that's a good marker actually. Um, so the mansion house was part of this Mission Dolores complex, and it was 1850 got turned into a bar and a restaurant, um, very early days of the roadhouse. And people would go out there across the sand dunes and on the Mission Road and basically go out for a day in the country and would stop at the, at the mansion house for their drinks and to go see the racetracks. Even then, though there was a church right next door. Yeah, the church was <laughs> like not getting in people's way at the time. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, and then over here, this is a, we're looking at the Willows, which would be about 18th and Mission, 17th Street and Mission. And it was a little gully slash hollow uh, with willow trees in it. And uh, I think you can see in the distance, in the center distance, you can actually see uh, Mission Dolores Church just under, just to the left of the American flag uh, in the distance. And again, a very typical sort of roadhouse where you'd stop and they would have food for you and drinks. And then they would have like little bits of entertainment to draw you in like, balloon ascensions or bands to play on Sundays. Wow. Yeah. People liked balloon ascensions. There were so many balloon ascensions. <laughs> yeah. I don't, what did we compare it to today? I don't know, but it's, it's a stunt, right? It's like a thing, like, let's go see this, I don't know, museum of ice cream, right? Or whatever they've got today. <laughs> so, oh, no. yeah. so here's my Muni map, David, which is old, I think, and antique in itself. But I want to show you if we kind of go back to 1869. One of my favorite maps. I'm really proud that we were able to kind of broker the broker the um, transaction that got this to David Rumsey. It's one of my absolute favorites. 
Yeah, but you look funny, David. You know, you look at this 1869 map. It doesn't look that different from the Muni map. All the streets are in there pretty much, except for that middle part. And, uh, you know, it looks like the city's all built up, you know, just less than 20 years after its start. It's um, just a map, Woody. Yes, you're right. And we're going to see how uh, unrealistic <laughs> some of these maps are in reality. But at this time, we also have roads going out of town in some of these more open areas. And on these roads, most of them going out, of course, down to the peninsula, you have roadhouses. And think of this as, you know, more open countryside once you get south of the Mission District. And if you're on a horse or on a buggy and taking a trip, you know, every mile or so, you want to stop maybe to water your horse and maybe water yourself. So there were what we call mile houses that uh, open for business along these roads. Right. Uh, four mile house, five mile house, six mile house. And, you know, David, are these, what are these four or five or six miles from? Supposedly they're from the, they're from the plaza, Portsmouth Square, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was kind of the center of town in, in the early days of San Francisco. And oh, they basically, it? It, was, it was a naming convention, right? It was just sort of like a, a thing that people used for their roadhouse name. It didn't really correspond. And then, and it, I mean, it told you where they were too, or how obviously how far they were and why, you know, what you wanted to accomplish on your trip or when to expect to arrive there. Yeah, but again, like the map, you can't take it too seriously. They're not exact. I can tell you that. Like the difference yeah. between the, the distance between five mile house and six mile house was like half a mile. <laughs> so, and then because you have these different roads, you have actually multiple mile houses. So you might have a five mile house on, you know, the Mission Road, and you might have a five mile house you did on uh, the Third Street. So, uh, at one time, I think there were like three, four mile houses just to get it more confusing. But these survived, you know, even into the 20th century. This is a four mile house, the remnants of it at least, in 1982, which is on uh, Third Street on Yosemite. It's gone now, but you can see this is like an 1860s building. Right. And then Five Mile House, which is still standing. This is uh, on San Bruno Avenue. You, know, you, you wouldn't really drive on this because you're on 101 going south now. But if you wanted to, you could get on San Bruno Road. And uh, that building is still there. Um, later, they had uh, across the street on, across Wildy Street on San Bruno, there's this little building that kind of appropriated the name. Um, okay. And, yeah. I was confused about that because... Uh... Yeah, I mean, that one's still there. And I remember seeing that big five mile house and that's written there for, you know, because Bayshore Boulevard had been built by that time. And so they were trying to get people to turn off. To yeah, it used to be no 101, right? You could just go down to Third Street from, from this street, but continue on east. Um, yeah, it was kind of a big intersection. But it's all still cut is. off. <laughs> and then you have a six mile house. This was down in Visitation Valley uh, along Bayshore Boulevard. This was a big one. And, uh, and we should talk a little bit about this. I don't know, I think of it as like the arc of a, a roadhouse. It usually opens with big plans, like we're, it's a resort and we're gonna, ladies are welcome and we're going to have, you know, fine dinners and champagne and oysters. And then as business doesn't do well, it sort of, you know, just descends into more of a hoodlum resort. Um, and then usually the usual end of the arc of a roadhouse life is, there's a fire and it burns to the ground. That's just the way most roadhouses Those go. smokers, right? There's, yes. there's drunken hoodlum smokers like to play some fire. Yeah, maybe. There definitely was some arson in some of these. And then if you continue down that road, of course, there's the Seven Mile House, which is still open for business, David. And I totally recommend Ooh. people check it out if they don't, uh, if they haven't been there before. It's just a great cozy little place. Um, yeah. Some good food, actually. I just read someone had some adobo there today. Yeah, which... yeah, they have Filipino food and it's really good. And it, it actually isn't in San Francisco. It's just a, over the border, but uh, a great little institution and really the last of the mile houses that's still open. But this went down to your neighborhood, David. You grew up in San Bruno and these yeah. mile houses continued all the way down the peninsula, right? Right, South City and the 16 mile house is still in Millbrae. And there was 
one in between the 14 mile house, which was just a couple blocks from, from where I grew up. You know, they called it Uncle Tom's Cabin, but uh, um, yeah, they just kept going. Yeah, the current 16 mile house is actually a different building and slightly in a different location, but it carries on that tradition. And these were, these were the centers of community. I mean, people would actually name their other businesses nearby after it, like that four mile house. There's still, I think, a four mile cleaners across the street from where that four mile house was. And the same with 12 mile and 16 mile. People would actually even use it as their address. Like somebody, yeah. somebody lives 16 mile house and they just you live nearby. You, know? you reminded me about the 16 mile house. It was in Millbury on El Camino Center Street, I believe. And uh, there was, it was one of the first kind of Millbury preservation failures mm -hmm. where they just couldn't, they tried to save it and they didn't have the money. And it was early on, it was like the early seventies. Um, yeah, I think the there's a plaque. There's a plaque on El Camino where it was. I think the historical society actually started with that project. I think that's yeah. how it's going. All right, back to this map because we're talking about San Francisco roadhouses. Um, you remember this Mission San Jose Road? You go out Mission, then it connects to San Jose today, San Jose Avenue. Well, right. as early as 1850s, you didn't have to keep going south. You could make a right, essentially where City College is today and go out to the- What country. street would you turn on? Ocean Avenue. It Ocean called, Avenue. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. the Ocean Road. And now most of Ocean <laughs> Avenue uh, it follows that route. Um, and you know this is the countryside. Again, you're going to Lake Merced uh, and you see this little star at, right next to it is a horse racing track, which actually started in the 1860s. So another attraction. But David, I want to say, you know, remember this map, 1869, you got the whole right. sunset district. It's all uh, mapped out. What does it really look like if we went out there in the 1850s? Uh, a trackless wasteland. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a vibrant. Oh, this uh, is an 1860s picture, Woody. No, it isn't. But it's similar. It's it's a later view that shows what you would have seen. Uh, you know, it was sand dunes. It was a, a an ecosystem of sand dunes and seasonal ponds, but very much the countryside. Even though you see all those streets and roads in the map, it's really a trackless desert. Um, most of the land out there. Uh, it's a you know it's a it's a vital native plant environment. There you go. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and then this is Lake Merced, David. Uh, what year do you think this picture was taken? I, you want me to say? I think it's a 1912 or so. It's crazy. 1910. It's, it's 1910 is what we think. And this is what it looked like in 1910. You know, we're talking about 50 years earlier than this. Um, <clears throat> so it's the countryside. And of course, People go out there for a, a Sunday ride and uh, want to go out to the beach and race their horses on the hard sand. And, and so the roadhouses uh, are established to basically cater to those people and make them stop and have some food or drink. A uh, very early one was called the Lake House. And this is a very humble looking roadhouse. You can tell it's just kind of a, almost a shack. Right. But cater to women. Well, there is a woman there, at least. <laughs> a lot. I got to say, women are not a big part of tonight's show because uh, the roadhouse life was very much a male uh, sphere at the time. And women who were involved, although there were women who worked and, ran, and even ran roadhouses, uh, they just weren't given the latitude to be doing that. And it was mostly guys drinking and driving and, and gambling. Taking and out their, their fancy hot rods with their big, strong horses. Right, Big strong horses. That's right. Big strong horses. I don't know. Which and uh, horses. also uh, nearby is a little more, uh, more uh, I don't know, fancy roadhouse called the Ocean House, which was this is pretty much where Lowell High School is today, um, on like Eucalyptus, uh, which was the old part of the old Ocean Road. I don't and, know how I could go to the Lake House when the Ocean House is right there. Yeah, you know? I know. I know you, you kind of feel like maybe the drinks are cheaper. You know how like when you go get a latte and you go to one coffee place and you're like, this place, the latte is going to be four bucks and that place it's going to be eight. So I think it's that sort of calculus. Woody, don't tell me you're drinking eight dollar latte. I am not. I am not. So, <laughs> but the ocean house, you know, it says here it has a bowling alley that you could rent a boat 
you look over on the far left, you can see a little bit of the lake there, I think. Um, they had target shooting, uh, band, like I said, bands would come out and, uh, and they had the racetrack that opened in the 1860s. So these are all reasons people would go to the Ocean House and out to Lake Merced. Um, the guy who ran it was a guy named Cornelius Stagg for a, it's kind of its heyday. And he also opened a place on today it would be Ocean Avenue and Junipero Serra Boulevard, a different roadhouse. And what was it called, David? Uh, was that the Ingleside? That's right, Ingleside Inn, which is yeah. where we get the name for the Ingleside neighborhood today. Right. But and like he, all good, he made a he made a very terrible end. Right, he was murdered by robbers inside the Ingleside Inn. That's right. That's it was terrible. hard running a roadhouse. It was like you're on a. It's in the dark. It's a lonely road. It's very easy to fall prey to robbers and things like that. Um, like all good roadhouses, the Ocean House burned down in 1882. By the way, if you were curious, what happened with all that water right next to it? Yeah, yeah. No fire. <laughs> no fire department nearby either. So, all right, back to our map. <sighs> I want to, we, we got a little evolution in the roadhouse options uh, in San Francisco. And it starts with a new road. If you have a road, you're gonna have roadhouses. And in 1863, Gary Street was essentially extended. Um, and the extension was called Point Lobos Road. And it came from this kind of center part of this red line and went west. Um, and it was a toll road, David. It was like you paid money to go on it. Why would you pay money to go on a road to the middle of sand dunes, essentially? Uh, because, you know, the ocean is a wonderful draw for people. True. And you wanted to get, you wanted to get there. And you wanted to, you know, race your rig down this <laughs> new, right. beautifully graded road that's smooth. So yeah, it's worth it. it. It's kind of like drag racing almost, right? You take your horse out or you want to race with your friends. And that's what horsey, you know, people with horses back then, it was a lot of it was these sports who wanted to like go fast and they might've even raised horses that they wanted to show off. So that's, that was a big attraction of the Point Lobos Road um, going out, big I wide mean, flat road. And and later on, I mean, they those folks really uh, exerted their power by, by getting something built in Golden Gate Park. We're not gonna talk about it, but they built the speed road in Golden Gate Park for that express purpose, right? I mean, yeah, for, for racing. Which is still represented a little bit today by what people still call Speedway Meadow, which is now right. Elman Hollow, they call it. But just to make sure the Point Lobos Road did well, they put a little an attraction, they put an attraction at the end of it where the white star is. And that was the Cliff House. That's Which I, I think we can call a roadhouse, don't you think, David? Yeah, I do. Okay. Even though it was kind of the destination, was it the destination? I think people kept going, but it was a pl good place to stop, and and uh, you got to the ocean. It's a natural place to stop. People still stop there, you know, even though the Cliff House currently closed. But yeah, yeah, and look at the seals on the rocks there. And basically, you're right, Dave. They would keep going on the beach, and they would race their horses on the beach. So now, because we have this road in the north, uh, we've got we've got a little option here. We could we could connect to the Mission San Jose Road, the Ocean Road, and uh, the path along Ocean Beach, and have something that they called the Circuit. Oh, so you could ride your horse all the way around that. Yeah. Oh! Or, your, or your buggy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had some fun with this. This is some beautiful animation that Woody. Uh, <laughs> learned how to do <laughs> but this was a this was a whole thing like the men would go out together and they would ride and they do the whole circuit they would stop at roadhouses all along the way they would do the loop and by the end they were pretty loopy by the time they got back downtown to maybe return their rented horse and buggy um, but the circuit lives on right david oh yes it certainly does that's my bicycle trip from the other day i would go and i I pretty much do the same thing. I go out San Jose Avenue and then I I go near ocean. I kind of try to avoid the cars, but then I uh, go down the Great Highway when it's closed and 46th Avenue when it's open. But uh, And you get home really, really drunk. Is that what you're saying on your bike? No. Yes. 
my legs are definitely kind of kind of wiggly by the end of that. Well, let's talk about the road, the uh, Cliff House and its Roadhouse history. It starts as this pretty small, humble building, and and it gets a pretty disreputable reputation uh, pretty quickly. Um, but it is popular, and it grows with these additions on either side, and uh, and then again fulfilling its Roadhouse destiny, it burns down in mm. uh, I think it was Christmas Day, eighteen ninety four. Well, it's obvious that it's pretty popular that they had to expand it that yeah. soon right I yeah mean, it was doing it was doing pretty well i think under diff different owners did what better than others uh, but by this time it's owned by adolf sutro who's we're actually looking from his property his estate down at the cliff house which he owned um in this view and, and when it can, burned it is we, it won't... we could say that adolf sutro took the took that Point Lobos Road out there and was captivated by the view and by the countryside and decided to make his home there. Yeah, well, up where Sutro Heights is. Yeah. And when this burned down, you know, everybody said to Sutro, because he said he was going to rebuild the cliff house. Everybody said, well, that's fine. But it's such a beautiful, natural spot. Um, don't get carried away with your rebuilding plans. <laughs> and he built this. <laughs> Which is... I guess the most popular version of the Cliff House. People just think this thing is crazy, right? It's huge chalet with towers and turrets and seven floors. I mean, look at this thing. It just dominates that point. Um, and I think a lot of people wish it was still there. Don't you wish it was still there, David? I kind of do because there's really not very many pictures or descriptions of what was inside. So I am very curious about what the heck was inside that huge place and well, what were the rooms like and, and what were they used for and all yeah, that. Good question, because, you know, it looks like a hotel, but it really wasn't run as an official hotel. So it does make you wonder what were the rooms used for? And some roadhouses definitely rented rooms for um, short stays. Let's put hourly? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if hourly, but but like all good roadhouses, this one burns down too in September 7th, 1907. And by this time, Adolf Sutro's dead, but his daughter builds a more uh, restrained classical version of the Cliff House, which is essentially what we have today with an addition. She um, looks like she rebuilt seal rocks too and got bigger seals yeah those seals are not to scale do not oh. do not think those sea lions are to scale monster sea lions <laughs> anyway that's our cliff house so if we're gonna okay we're gonna continue our circuit though david we have to go south from here along ocean beach so let's turn the corner absolutely and go back a few years yeah i mean this is seal rock house built before the cliff house this is 1857 it's the earliest i could really see it was there um and it has a lot of lore and origin stories about shipwrecks and using the timbers to build it um but it is essentially the first roadhouse out at ocean beach the first of many um and when it was built look david this is what you know i don't even know what they were thinking their customers were going to come from because <laughs> with no circuit it was a long way to go out the ocean road up Ocean Beach, or you had to cross all those sand dunes to get there. So it kind of struggled business-wise for a few years. But but right, I mean, so the circuit, really, there was no road south. There was no great highway. The great highway was kind of the hard packed sand uh, within, the, within the, the tide zone, right? I mean- Absolutely. There's no road. You have to like yeah. basically- Take your horse and fight the dunes. But you wouldn't ride through those dunes. You would ride along the beach, um, right. along the along the flat part. Right. But before Point Lobos Road is built, you can't keep going north. You know, you're going to have a hard time. So, yeah. All right. Things get a little better with the Point Lobos Road. And, and look at this. Well, here's the Seal Rock House, first of all. What the heck is opened up next to it, David? And why? How, how could this happen? So <laughs> that, well, as you see, it's the Ocean Beach Pavilion. I think it was built by by uh, a man named Hotaling. Is that right? Yep. Who's, who's in 1906 famous, famous whiskey uh, maker, I guess. You know, there's a, there's, what's that poem from 1906? 
Yeah, it's when they saved. Um, uh, it was when people yeah. were saying the 1906 earthquake and fire was God's judgment on the sinful San Francisco. So there was some doggerel that uh, because AP Hotaling's whiskey warehouse survived. So it went something like, if God was mad at the city for being over frisky, why did it? Why did he burn the churches and save Hotelling's whiskey? Right. <laughs> something like that. Anyway, he builds this, but what is what is his business plan? I mean, look, there's like seven people here on the beach. We've Church. got the Seal Rock House and the Cliff House. So, what is what is going on here? How can he get anybody to fill that giant uh, venue? Well, Woody, there was now a thing called mass transit. <laughs> they built going through Golden Gate Park down down H Street on the other side of the park. Now Lincoln Way. They built the Park and Ocean Railroad. And it crossed uh, Golden Gate Park, which you can see the lush, verdant Golden Gate Park on the right side of this <laughs> image. Uh, but through some some shenanigans in in uh, on the Park Commission, they were able to build a steam line through Golden Gate Park that ended right in front of the Ocean Beach Pavilion. I mean, the Ocean Beach Pavilion was built at the terminal of the Park and Ocean Railroad, just like a year later. Yeah, and this is definitely trying to be, this is one of those roadhouses that's trying to be a resort, right? Like, you know, yeah. Cat Catalina or, you know, Newport or something. Like they're hope, he's hoping that this is gonna be a fancy place. He's got a big giant ballroom set up. And in some ways it's the most successful thing out there because it survives for a long time and it changes. This is the same building. In 1935, it lost its towers, you can see, but it became a place called Topsy's Roost. And this is, by the way, this is a, a warning. This is the most racist business, I think, that has ever been established and run in San Francisco. It had yeah. very much a Sambo sort of Uncle Tom thing going on. Um, the chicken, it, I, I don't know though, it's crazy inside. The, the, you could sit in a chicken shack and have your dinner and then get on one of these slides to slide down from your table down to the dance floor. So you have to admit it's an eccentric and uh, I don't know, elaborate uh, uh, place to go for dinner, but uh, not so PC, mean, very bad, very bad. And so this many. was a destination. Yeah, Absolutely. very crazy. But look, here's the same building. This is like when it's the surf club and it, it had many different uses and names and different operators um, into the 1970s. It was finally torn down in 1972. Right. I mean, what, what are some other names? It was uh, the family dog, the yeah. friends and relations hall, the Edgewater, it mm -hmm. was named. It also housed the uh, model car raceway in the mid 60s, late 60s early 70s yeah it had a lot of uses and it was a giant hall that had many different uh operators and until they basically they tore it down with with playland which you can see here this amusement park in oh, 1972. all right this is what the site looks like today by the way if you want to go out there it's parcel four it's open space no more seal rock house no more ocean beach pavilion but you can walk on a little boardwalk on that site very rich in roadhouse history all right, we're going down the road, David. Now we're at Fulton and Great Highway. And today we have these beautiful condominiums. Um, yeah, I've but, been in one. It's a nice view if you can scrape the salt off your outside of your window. <laughs> but back in the day, this corner was, the, was basically anchored by Mike Sheehan's roadhouse called Sheehan's Tavern. And Mike was, uh, he was politically connected, but he was always in trouble with the police commission for serving underage drinkers, playing music past uh, permit hours. Um, it, and this eventually, this building transforms into a restaurant as part of Playland. But look at this thing in the back, David. This is one block back. Uh, yeah. East. It's called Cycler's Rest. And that's a crazy big building. What's its history? So <laughs> this building was... Uh... It, 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 it originally uh, came to life inside Golden Gate Park as uh, I think it was the Humboldt County building for the 1894 Midwinter Fair. And, uh, you know, Adolf Sutro was 
a remarkable collector of stuff. And once the end of the midwinter fair happened, he bought all kinds of things, including the, the Firth wheel, you know, uh, rods and attractions. But he also bought this building and he had it moved out of, of Golden Gate Park. It was kind of right behind the Japanese tea garden. Yeah, and in then, the park. Uh, yeah. moved all the way out to Fulton Street out here. Yeah, and his idea his idea was going to be a roadhouse for all the bicyclists that came out to Ocean Beach, and it didn't quite take off. But we will see somebody who did a better job of uh, exploiting that um, business model, you might say. All right, we're going to keep That's going crazy. south here. Let's see. There we go. What? Well, too far. The beach chalet. Now, David, I don't think of this as a roadhouse, right? This is like a nice restaurant with a view. It's not really a roadhouse. And it was built in 1925. Um, but the thing that kind of throws me off it even more is it's in the park, which I can't believe there'd be a, a roadhouse inside Golden Gate Park. I just wouldn't, you know, it's like a private bar slash restaurant with some perhaps, uh, I don't know, dicey things going on. Uh, it really is the closest thing to a roadhouse we have. And for a long time uh, in the seventies, it was kind of a roadhouse when the bar was uh, created in <laughs> by the veterans of foreign wars. Some people might remember that. What happened here? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> it's like David Chang somehow wrote on our, uh, on our slides. Um, I, but I, you know, we're going to take a little detour here because we're in Golden Gate Park. I want to go back east in Golden Gate Park to talk about the roadhouse that was within the park, which is right over near the Conservatory of Flowers, was a place called the Casino, um, which was was a roadhouse. It was built in 1882. It's a bar, and it caused predictably a bunch of problems in which people were getting drunk in the park and the women and children who were going to enjoy the public park were not happy and it got a bad rep. Um, the park commission closed it down. It moved and was used as a museum and from park offices for a while. And then eventually it was moved right out of the park altogether over to Fulton Street and 24th Avenue where it got a, a story added and, uh, and, uh, and I don't know, David, why do you think a roadhouse at 24th and Fulton seems a little strange to me? Well, uh, I mean, it's all houses and apartment buildings today, right? Why would somebody be on Fulton Street um, and 24th Avenue to go to a roadhouse? I'm uh, frankly, I'm stumped at this point. I'm not one. It's it because it was, you know, Fulton Street had a streetcar line that came all the way out and stopped there. There was uh, there were more attractions coming in to Golden Gate Park, maybe. Maybe. Let's talk about another place on Fulton that might help explain this a little bit more. This is over at 36th and Fulton. And here's a view from 1909. And you can see the Richmond District is a giant, is a bunch of sand dunes. This they're putting in streetcar tracks here, electric streetcar tracks. Can, on can we street. stop a second and see if we can get rid of all these red lines off here? Yeah, but I don't know how to do that. How I don't know how to do it either. <laughs> Maybe stop your screen share and then. No, uh, hey Woody, you just go up to your um, the the board option on top, and you can do the erase. And just put looks like a little eraser, and you just go over it. Hmm. The oh, annotate. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to annotate and look for the um, eraser. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Thank you. All right. Whew. Thank you. Very strange. Let's see if we can start again. Oh, I gotta get off this now. Boom, 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 boom. Escape. Working on it. All right, we're back. Uh, All right, so let's just zero in on this part right here because there's this giant building in the middle, again, in the middle of sand dunes in the Richmond district. So here, here is the casino over here, which got moved out of the park. You can see Lone Mountain in the distance here too. And uh, this, what is this giant building? This is a place that was called Hotel Cairns. It was opened by a guy named J.C. Cairns. And this is what it looks like. And again, it's, it's, the same, it's the same idea, David. Like people are driving on Fulton or they're taking the streetcar, which is being extended 
Right. And they have the park and Spreckles Lake nearby, but it's essentially out in the country. And so you have a place where you can go and, and stop and party. And uh, strangely, this place advertised that it had 50 rooms in it for rent, which I don't know how they fit 50 rooms. Um, and again, makes me think they were pretty small and I'm not sure what the activity was in there, but the Cairns was obviously, it was frequently in trouble for uh, salacious activity, let's say. Oh, really? That went on, yeah. Well, I can also imagine, you know, looking out there that people want to come out to the country and be by the beach too, you know, the burgeoning uh, amusement zone. So maybe people actually did come out for, for a night and a, a weekend or something there. I do know there were like bicycle races on um, polo fields and things like that, that people would stay overnight. And they, they definitely had a lot of banquets and neighborhood improvement club meetings in there. But the cool thing about this building is it's still there today. Yeah. Uh, it's an apartment building now. And it's had some modifications. You can see you can't walk in the bar on the corner anymore. It was a sanitarium, an old folks home type thing for a while. But it's an apartment building. It's still there today and still looks pretty much the same. All right. Now we're moving into, David, you know, I, the other thing about Fulton Street, we're moving into a new era of roadhouses. It used to be people were on their horses or renting a buggy. And the roadhouses were kind of fading away. Um, but then the automobile just like put it back into high gear. Now people could have an, their car and drive around and do what with the circuit, the version of the circuit today. Um, so automobiles just like reinvigorated roadhouses. You can see this ad from 1909 where they're basically saying, hey, drive around and drink a lot at all these different places. <laughs> so, right. Or take know. a taxi, take a taxi out there too. Yeah, you could do that. They have the taxi cab ad. All right, so let's go back to the beach and back on the circuit now that we've got our cars. And, you know, this is the beach chalet today, but right. the first beach chalet was actually across the street, David. And Great it idea. A, it was a Put bit it right of a, on the beach. And it was a bit of an anti-roadhouse. Why is that? Why do I call it like an anti-roadhouse? Well, I think it was originally marketed as a place for um, more for women. We were talking about women weren't getting much, uh, uh, you know, they didn't want to be in the seamy, uh, other drinking establishments. And so the beach chalet, I think, was built mostly for mothers and children and uh, and and for people who, who who wanted something a little more wholesome. Yeah. And bicyclists, too. Like these little sheds are actually for bicycles on each side. And yeah, it's a place right. you get a lemonade. You can get your kid to the bathroom, things like that. And it was the park commission that that built it. There's a problem with the Beach Chalet, the first Beach Chalet though, which is being on the west side of Great Highway, uh, the ocean was trying to claw it back. <laughs> um, in 1914, especially, they had a lot of erosion problems, as you can see, which is very similar today. Uh, and the Beach Chalet was always imperiled. And that really did lead to them building the Beach Chalet we have today in 1925. But David, this one survived in 1925, but what do you do with it when you have a new beach chalet? Uh, you move it, <laughs> move it, move it inland. <laughs> Break it up you into know, a couple. That's the other thing. So it's like, there, there were so many house movings that were happening in early San Francisco and around these times. They didn't want to demolish it. It's a great building. So they moved it. Yeah, why not recycle it? And it got moved to 24th Avenue between Irving and Judah. And boom, Boy Scout Hall. Um, and so this was this was around until like 1958. Uh, now it's a Sunset Health Center, uh, public health center. Um, but it, even though it wasn't a roadhouse for most of its life and it was a Boy Scout Hall, it did burn down um, in May of 1958. I hope someone got a merit badge. <laughs> for, for, for lighting it a fire, you mean? Uh, <laughs> All right, back to Ocean Beach. This is La Playa and Irving Street today. Now we're in the Sunset District. This is what it looks like. But remember Cycler's Rest? Well, how about Wheelman's Rest? This was Charles Barda, and he opened the Villa Miramar, and he rebranded it Wheelman's Rest to try to attract the bicyclists. So what, what year was this about? 
Oh, that's a good question. I have it somewhere. It's about 1900, roughly. You can see over in the left here, we have a Carville house, a house right. made of a streetcar or a horse car, rather, on the dunes. And uh, Barta was a very, he was like a pioneer grocer to that area and that neighborhood. But he also, of course, served liquor because um, that was where the money was. And so he transitioned he, into this wheelman's rest idea. 1895, 1890s and 1900s, bicycles were really really popular yeah. and golden gate park had the one had, had the one set of paved roads i believe right so the best yeah they had the best roads west you know so. bicycles could ride through golden gate park much the same as they do today and yeah. it was just a, it was just a booming booming kind of I don't want to call it a fad, but it was like everybody was riding a bicycle back then. It was the new thing. It was definitely a new thing. And women were riding them. You know, that was a big freedom for women to ride bicycles in the 1890s. So, oh, uh, I mean, you wrote a book on Carville, right? I did. And wasn't there like a woman's bicycle club that had a Carville clubhouse? Yeah, the Lady Falcons, they did. Uh, so this is just capturing the business, right? I mean, right. We're, we talked about the men and the horses to have the roadhouses. Now it's the the men and the women with bicycles. And, and now we're up to cars and a lot of these too. All right, now we're in sort of the star of the show. These buildings, which is at 1536 La Playa and next door, are these buildings. So you could, yes, yeah, so you can see the little building here that this little apartment building is actually the stables. Uh, the garages for the carriages of the old breakers that and this is this is remodel is a crime <laughs> yeah they kind of did a little number on the big building and i've been told the big one probably both buildings are for sale together so you could buy them right now david i think it's on the market for Nine and a half million dollars. How something? many people we got in this show? I mean, for like 40 people, maybe we could all get together. We pool our money. And uh, if they could fit 50 rooms in the in the cairns, then we could all get together and take over the breakers. You know, it doesn't look like much, David, but there is something more to this building today. And, uh, you know, this was a, a roadhouse that kind of came and went and had different owners. It was the breakers. And it was the crest. You can see a little dance floor here. They had jazz music, a um, little mural on the back wall. It was Mendel's, it was called later. But the cool thing about this, David, is when they made an apartment building, they didn't take away, they didn't strip everything from the old roadhouse out. And no. you and I were able about a decade ago now to get between the floors of this apartment building, and we found remnants of the old roadhouse uh, yeah. in between floors. Unbelievable, like buried treasure. We had to crawl through a hatch in the ceiling to get up in there. That was just amazing. And uh, I guess there had been a small fire in the building at one time, and the fire department came in and inspected it, and they, they made them uh, spray this gray gooey paint all over this fire retardant paint on everything so it was just kind of had this gray mud stuff on it but you can still see the details so it's those undersea uh sea seahorses and fish and the fish have the different um lighting things coming out of their mouth seashells and there you could see a little bit of what the original colors were on the back sides yeah, somebody did a great job making these reliefs. Here's a like a turtle or something eating these fish. And this one looks pretty worried. Um, you know, these are amazing reliefs and decorations done up on the cornices and the ceiling. And David mentioned these fish. Here's some of the original color you could see. And the fish all are holding essentially light bulbs uh, hanging on chains out of their mouths. It must have been an amazing sort of aquatic themed uh, interior design maybe when it was the breakers it may, i mean that makes sense i don't know how the crest been. or mendel's fits into this but a hidden a hidden sort of like treasure like you said david in a very pedestrian uh, looking apartment building and a little bit of the old roadhouse past hidden in there very cool yeah i want to go back in there yeah i take some more pictures well maybe they have an open house because it's for sale we can sneak in so 
<laughs> bring a ladder. Bring, bring a ladder. ladder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to get down to the end of the circuit here. We're going down the Great Highway. Pretty boring, but in one time it was the bungalow or the Somerset, which was a place you'd stop in your car and get these like beautiful view windows up here. All of these roadhouses at Ocean Beach had dance floors, live music, and giant fireplaces. And the Somerset slash bungalow was no exception. Why would you need a fireplace? Oh man, it is cold and wet <laughs> and windy and dark. And what you really want is a giant fireplace. Here's the great highway. We're looking north um, in the 1910s. And you can see like, these are all just stops. You know, here's like where that breakers is and then the bungalow and you just keep going. You stop at each one of these on the circuit. Right. Open great highway, by the way. Don't need a ballot measure. Nobody's on that road. Um, but let's look at this little complex here around Rivera. And they're redoing these today. This is public housing around Rivera and Great Highway. Um, they're redoing them and painting them right now, actually. Uh, but in the old days, it was where the sea breeze was. And Shorty Roberts, who owned Roberts at the Beach uh, for a long time, uh, was connected with this roadhouse. So same thing, big dance floor, giant stone fireplace. Um, but what's what's Robert's best known for, David? Uh, uh, Blocky the Blocky the Blocky the horse that swam the Golden Gate, as you can see from this postcard. Yeah, Shorty Roberts. They they printed Black Blocky's picture on all their plates and ashtrays and and all their material, and we. You know, we we had a great video of of Blackie swimming the Golden Gate that was given to us by the late Stephen Parr. So it's an unbelievable story, one of the best of the early stories we told at uh, Outside Lands, I think. It's but really, Shorty out. Roberts traded on the Blackie story for the entire length of his ownership of that place. It's definitely like a roadhouse story where people had a little bit too much to drink and somebody made a bet. You know, and Blackie basically, I mean, uh, Shorty Roberts basically said his horse was a great swimmer. Somebody else said, horses can't swim. And he said, my horse could swim the Golden Gate. And, yeah. and they they fulfilled the bet. And the horse did swim the Golden Gate. Very good. And, and Blackie swam the Golden Gate with Shorty Roberts holding on to his tail. Right. That's Shorty over here. <laughs> and all the newspaper reports said the horse was fine. Shorty didn't look so good by the end. <laughs> All right, we're getting near the end. This is Great Lower Great Highway near Viceni. And this is what was there in the old days. It was called the Oceanside House. It was a very early roadhouse. You can see it's kind of on this little bluff, um, which you really can't see today so much. And later this transitioned into a private residence, which has a whole long backstory of sort of uh, Zen Buddhism being introduced in America and occult stuff going on. But then a restaurant slash roadhouse called Tate's at the Beach. And that's what this is here. You can see it was kind of elevated back then. Yeah. And all these places were places where you would drive out your car and, and go out. And it's still kind of out in the country at that point. You know, the whole sunset, there were huge, there was huge sand dunes in the middle of the sunset. It wasn't all developed as it is now. Right. And uh, Well, what happened to Tate's at the Beach? That's what I want to know, David. Hello? Woody, it's a it's a very common story. <laughs> Giant fire, December first, nineteen forty. May have been arson. Another another merit badge from those Boy Scouts. <laughs> Burning down Tate's at the beach. I you know there's not Tate's was around for a long time and it was very popular. I I've never really seen interior photos of it as a restaurant though. I'm I'm curious why they don't exist. But yeah. I'd like to have gone to Tate's. It would have been cool. All right, now we're making the turn. We're going to go back towards Lake Merced and we're on Sloat and we're going to stop in Stern Grove at the Trocadero Inn. Uh, now, this was the, the Green family. They basically homesteaded or squatted, depending who you ask, a lot of that area north of Lake Merced, including planting the trees around the gully of what is now Stern Grove. And George W. Green, one of the sons, opened the Trocadero in 1892 as a roadhouse, trying to get people to come down and picnic and boat on what's Pine Lake today and drink and eat. And the great thing about the Trocadero is still there still, today. Still there. 
I have great memories as a child going there for the um, for the Kiwanis Club uh, enchilada feed. <laughs> there's a lot of stories with the Trocadero, <laughs> and there's a lot of stories with each of these roadhouses that we haven't hit. Um, Abe Ruth, the notorious political boss, was arrested there, actually, hiding out. Roadhouses were a good place to hide out after, in the graft trials after the 1906 earthquake and fire. Um, are and there was, still, are there bullet holes in the door? Of there the are, there? but they're not from that. There is apparently bullet holes in the door, a uh, big fireplace. And uh, it was recently made a city landmark um, with some help from Parkside neighbors because it is the most, I think it's the most historic building in the Southwest corner of San Francisco, the truck. Did you have anything to do with that landmarking? I may have, I may have had something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that, Woody. Well, thank you for joining me tonight, David. Uh, I, I I don't know if you actually had a beer. I, I brought a beer with me. Um, I, I, I did. I All did right. have a beer.